everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. That's what I like to do. I really like it when a customer comes in and says, give me the best bottle of wine you have for 15 bucks. When I can nail it, that makes me feel awesome. So I'm hoping these wine programs help you to understand that, to understand that you know there are $40 or $50 bottle of wines out there that aren't worth the money and there's some 10 to 15 dollar wines that just rock it. In fact I think it was just a couple episodes ago I did the Bordeaux and I thought that 32 dollar bottle of Bordeaux from Ho Madoc was absolutely amazing. And 32 dollars yeah for a lot of us 32 bucks is a lot of money but if you can find a great bottle of wine for that amount of money and it really does go to that level you know it's worth it if you love wine. And that's why you watch us, right? You love wine. Any GSM blends. We're going to do two red blends. And I did this one because one's 20 and one's 40. So we have the opposite ends of the spectrum as far as price. This is 20. This is double that price. We want to see if really this is double this in quality. Or where are we at? Um, $20 bottles of wine. Sell, I can sell a ton of them at the store. $40, not so much, unless we're in the midst of the summer, then we end up selling more of those uh, wines. But, you know, the locals, we, we have a lot of very wealthy people that live in my area here, and we have a lot of hardworking guys that make good money. But, you know, you got to, you know, it costs a little bit to live in the San Juan Islands. So, I'm just saying, sometimes you have to conserve your money. Maybe you don't want to spend that much on a bottle of wine. You want to find something great for less money, which people... In my community know I can find them so maybe I've kind of you know destroyed that $40 range because I can find some great $20 wines just saying so this is the uh, 2000 and God do you think that yeah 2015 uh, Idiot's Grace a state grown red table wine from the Columbia Gorge so there's a Columbia Valley and the Columbia Gorge is on the other side of the Columbia Valley, right by the, um, the Columbia River, towards Oregon. Okay, right across, from very close to Oregon, in fact. This is 34% Sangiovese, 33% Cab Franc, 33% Cabernet Sauvignon. Interesting blend, Sangiovese based. Idiot's Grace. And this is from Mameluce Winery. So Memelus is a winery, and Idiot's Grace is a, uh, a sub-label that they have. Um, cool name. like it. Let's see what we get on the nose. Got Right off the bat, i got raspberries and black olives. And, and a little bit of green olive. So black olive, green olive, uh, raspberries. There's a little bit of manure coming through underneath. You know, a little bit of uh, horse shit, a little bit of um, uh, cow poop. Get a little bit of black tea and hints of bark. Yeah, interesting nose. Now, Sangiovese, you know, is most famous in Chianti. That's where most Chiantis are Sangiovese based. Even Super Tuscans tend to have quite a bit of Sangiovese in them. A little bit of chocolate coming through. So you have this, uh, the poop smells very subtle. You may not catch it. I caught it. A little bit of, um, I love this, a little bit of popcorn kernel coming through as well. Very interesting nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. The popcorn kernel comes through on the mid-palate, which I find quite intriguing. I'm talking about, you know, when you pop, let's say you use an air popper. No oil, just an air popper. You get a little bit of that popcorn kernel flavor. That's coming through with a little bit of chocolate. Um, black raspberries. Good acidity. Well integrated acidity. It, it brightens up on the, it gives it a little lift on the palate. Almost crunchy tannins from that acid. When you combine the acids with the tannins, you get kind of a crunchiness to it, which I like a lot. This is a great food wine, by the way. If 
you're if you're doing spaghetti a bowl of spaghetti this would be fantastic now the chocolate notes kind of sneak in on the back side very long finish on this I'm still tasting it which is a very good quality in a wine do you guys like long finishes or do you even think about it you know I mean I like a wine to hang on for a little bit I don't like it to disappear I think that's a very good quality in a wine interesting color it's fairly dark for a Sangiovese but that's because it has some cabinet Black tea notes hit right on the back of the mint palette as well. Good balance. I mean, this is just like, just flows across the palette really nicely. A little bit of lift, a little bit of crunchiness, uh, chocolate, raspberries, uh, a little bit of strawberry coming through, black tea. Um, I like this one a lot. It's lighter in style, so you know, it's like not quite Pinot Noir in light, but a little above Pinot Noir. Sangiovese is known to be that way. Um, very, very pleasant wine. You could drink this solo. A cocktail wine, let's say that's a phrase we use. A little bit of a cocktail wine thing going on, but very delicious. I'm going to put this a nine, eight and a half to nine in the delicious category. But I love the finish on this. Very light. This would be, you could actually do this with a cod. If you had a little bit of seasoning on the cod, even halibut, this would work very nicely. Good chicken wine, um, pasta, red sauce, that sort of thing. By the way, I just want to give a credit to Gary Vaynerchuk. He's one that I first heard say 10 in the delicious category. I kind of latched onto that. I think it's a great way to kind of describe a wine. So I don't want to take full credit for that. Uh, but this is an 8.5 to 9 in the delicious category. I love that phrase. This hangs on for a long time. I am very impressed by the finish on this one. I am going to go B plus A minus. A lot of it has to do with the finish. It's good balance. Everything about this wine I like. It's $20, guys. This is worth seeking out. Not big and heavy. Not big fruit bomb. Just nicely made wine. Good structure. All of that. Let's move on. This is the um, Mark Ryan Winery 2017. The Dissident Red Wine from Columbia Valley, Washington State. This rolls in at $40, and it is so dark here, I cannot even... I'm frustrated. I don't have my flashlight either. Sorry, guys. I can't tell you the breakdown. I didn't write it down. Alan's right. I should write this stuff down so I can get it. Let's see if I can pull this out. And I think I can do it. 65% uh, Cab, 35%, 25% Merlot, 9% uh, Cab Franc, and 1% Petit, 1 petit Verdot. I did it. Mostly Cab. Now remember, That it is 65% Cab, 25% Merlot. So it's mostly Cab Merlot blend with a little bit of a Cab Franc, 9% Cab Franc, and 1% Petit Verdot. Just to say it again, just to irritate you guys, not really. Mark Ryan Winery, Mark Ryan, I've, I've reviewed some, I believe I've reviewed some of his wines before. Uh, he's a hard worker, that dude, man. He's a good salesman. He uh, started on the ground, uh, working the street, selling his wines, and he is very successful at this time. His wines get really high scores by critics, um, so he's he's done a good job. He's really done a good job, and he's a super nice guy. Let's see what we get on the nose. Intense on the nose. Tobacco, currants, a little bit of a. Uh, Get a little burn, get a little burn, guys, a little bit of burn. Get a little bit of black tea component coming through on that as well. A little bit of a touch of caramel coming through, which is intriguing. And just a hint of liquor. So let's see what we get on the pellet.
This is pretty big on the palate, but I, I will say it is not a fruit bomb. It is not hedonistic. It's balanced, but it's big. Big and balanced. Uh, current notes come through big time. Uh, balanced by uh, bark and tobacco notes. Um, a bit of touch of caramel coming through on the backside, but not much. Good balance, seamless across the palate, nice flow. It stays intense from front to finish, but never gets goopy. Never gets like fruit. Well, it's got, it has fruit on it. I will say that. I'm going to say that it doesn't go over the top. It's 14.7 alcohol, but that's a lot for a lot of people. They could, but it's well integrated into the wine. So it's not like you feel the alcohol. I smelled it, but I did not necessarily feel it on the palate as much. Yeah, you're going to feel it if you drink the whole bottle. Don't drink the whole bottle. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. But good balance, good food wine. Um, is it $20 more than the Idiot's Grace? They're entirely different animals. I will tell you that much. Idiot's Grace is a really good wine. Uh, this, for $40, I think, if you want to spring on $40, I think you're... Excuse me. I think you're really going to enjoy this wine. I think you will not feel like you were robbed. I think it's an absolutely... A forty-dollar bottle of wine. In fact, you know it might be slightly underpriced. Don't mark. Don't raise the price. But it could go for more than that. I'm just saying. Big without going over the top. That's hard to do. Good acidity. This will age easily ten years. Easily. Tobacco on the back end. I really like that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go straight up A minus on that. I think it's a great bottle of wine. Um, a minus A, just to be fair. A minus A. So you have two Washington Red blends. One's twenty, one's forty. They're both worth it. Lighter style, bigger style, but both really good in their own way. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch. I really appreciate it. Don't, don't forget to subscribe, to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. It really makes me feel good. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.